Rather than being one continuous solid surface, our planet's crust is made up of a series of tectonic plates that are pushing and pulling against one another with immense force. From the infamous San Andreas Fault to the lesser known yet equally significant seismic features, join me for today's video on a journey through the tectonic tapestry of our planet as we uncover the top 15 biggest earthquake faults and cracks. Starting with number 15, the Denali Fault, Alaska. The Denali Fault is a major intracontinental strike slope fault in Alaska, which stretches across a distance of about 750 miles or about 1,200 kilometers. It's part of the broader boundary between the Pacific and the North American tectonic plates, and it has historically been one of the main reasons why the landscape of the region so varies. At this fault is what's known as a right lateral strike slip movement, which means the Earth's crust on one side of the line moves horizontally past the other side, as well as creating huge structures and tears in the Earth, this can on occasion release a huge amount of energy. In recent times, the Denali Fault is famous for causing the 2002 Denali Earthquake, which was the largest recorded inland earthquake in North America in almost 150 years. With a magnitude of 7.9, it significantly reshaped the countryside, offsetting roads and triggering landslides. The quake was felt as far away as Louisiana, but despite its strength, it happened to be in such a remote location that there was very little damage. To researchers, the Denali Fault is particularly fascinating because of the way it cuts across different terrains, including mountains, glaciers, and valleys, and it showcases various different geological features influenced by the fault's activity. It has, for example, played an instrumental role in the formation of the Alaska Range, including North America's highest peak, Denali, which rises to a height of over 20,310 feet, or 6,190 meters. Number 14. The Kekarengu Fault, New Zealand the Kekarengu Fault in New Zealand is part of the network of faults of the Pacific Ring of Fire. It gained worldwide attention following the 2016 Kaikoura earthquake, which showed its importance in the region's tectonic activity, where, located on the northeastern coast of the South Island, it runs offshore and onshore and is a major contributor to the tectonic landscape of the country. The 2016 Kaikoura quake measured in at a magnitude of 7.8. It saw a complex interaction of multiple faults, including the Kekarengu which resulted in one of the most complicated seismic events ever recorded. During this earthquake, the Kekarengu Fault exhibited significant movement, with a horizontal displacement of up to 39 feet or 12 meters, and a vertical displacement of around 7 feet or just over 2 meters. This huge movement not only reshaped the local landscape, but also provided valuable insights into the behavior of fault systems like this one. Geologically, the Kekarengu Fault is part of the Marlboro Fault System, which are a series of right lateral strike slip faults that are caused by the motion between the Pacific and Australian tectonic plates. This fault system is responsible for shaping much of the topography of the northeastern South Island, including the uplift of mountain ranges and the formation of valleys. In effect, virtually anywhere you look in this part of New Zealand is there because of this fault line. Number 13. The New Madrid Fault the New Madrid Fault in the central United States is a vast seismic zone that extends across several states, including Missouri, Arkansas, Tennessee, and Kentucky. This fault system is not a single, distinct fault line, but instead a network of faults beneath the Mississippi River Valley, and is most famous for the series of powerful earthquakes that happened in 1811 and 1812, and were among the most powerful in the history of the continental U.S. These events were so intense that they significantly changed the landscape in the region surrounding the epicenter, and actually caused the Mississippi River to temporarily flow backward, while being felt as far away as New York City and Boston. The New Madrid seismic zone is also regarded as being quite unusual because it's located in the stable continental interior, far away from any active plate boundaries where most earthquakes happen. The reason for its seismic activity are not fully understood, but studies suggest that ancient rifts beneath the Earth's surface, known as the real foot rift, might play a role. With it being a mystery why it's there, the New Madrid Fault is of great interest to seismologists and emergency planners due to its potential for future earthquakes. While it's not as active as faults in California or Alaska, it's capable of producing large earthquakes that could have significant impacts on the densely populated cities in the Midwest and South. And if anything like what happened in 1811 and 12 were to happen today, it could cause untold damage. Number 12, Lake Baikal. Lake Baikal is an ancient geological formation located in the Siberian region of Russia that holds the record as being the largest freshwater lake by volume in the world, with just under a quarter of the planet's total surface freshwater supply contained within it. 
Rather than being formed in the same way as most other lakes, though, by the actions of rivers or glaciers, this one is formed along one of the planet's major fault lines. The lake's origin traces back to around 25 to 30 million years ago and developed on the Baikal Rift Zone, which is a significant continental rift where the Earth's crust is slowly pulling apart. This rifting process is caused by tectonic forces associated with the movement of the Eurasian Plate, and as the crust stretches and thins, it creates a low-lying area, which over time has been filled with water, leading to the formation of the lake. This is why it's so incredibly deep, reaching more than 5,300 feet or 1,600 meters beneath the surface. It's continually getting deeper, too, because of the ongoing rifting process, which pulls the lake's bottom further downwards, and it's estimated that the rift widens by about 0.8 inches or 2 centimeters per year. The lake's age, formation, and isolated location have led to the development of a unique ecosystem, with many species found nowhere else on Earth, such as the Baikal seal and at least 30 species of fish. It's also proven to be vital to human communities in the region for centuries, showing that tectonic activity isn't just a destructive force, but a constructive one too. Number 11. The Zagros Fold Thrust Belt The Kirkuk oil field in Iraq is one of the most important of its type in the northern part of the country, and it's long been a vital part of the economy. It, though, is only there because of tectonic activity, with the oil having been released by the Zagros Fold Thrust Belt. This feature, which extends over a vast area across Iran and Iraq, was formed by the collision of the Arabian and Eurasian tectonic plates, which is a process that began approximately 35 million years ago and continues to influence the region's geology today. The belt is made up of a series of parallel ridges and valleys, resulting from the folding and thrusting of sedimentary rocks. These structures were formed due to compressional forces exerted by the Arabian plate, pushing northwards against the Eurasian plate where the intense pressure and subsequent deformation led to the creation of large-scale folds, faults, and thrusts in the Earth's crust, and is mostly made of limestone, sandstone, and shale. One of the more unusual features of the Zagros Belt is its distinctive fold styles, which vary from gentle undulations to tight, steeply inclined folds. The belt is divided into several structural zones, each with its own geological characteristics, including the High Zagros, the Imbricated Zone, and the Simply Folded Zone. The High Zagros marks the boundary between the Arabian and Eurasian plates and contains some of the most rugged and mountainous terrain in the belt. The Thrust Belt is not just an interesting geological place, but it's also got a significant economic importance due to its vast reserves of hydrocarbons, far beyond those that are seen at Kirkuk. In fact, the region is one of the world's largest petroleum-producing areas, with numerous oil and gas fields located within its folded and faulted structures. And with continued activity in the belt, larger reserves are believed to be waiting to be found. Number 10. The Turkey-Syria Border In February of 2023, a 7.8 magnitude earthquake struck a region across the border between Turkey and Syria that was the most powerful in the region for more than 80 years. The energy released by the event affected an area of more than 140,000 square miles, or 350,000 square kilometers, and it was caused by a series of shallow strike-slip faults along parts of the East Anatolian fault line. Amazingly, in the three months following the main event, there were at least a further 30,000 aftershocks, and it was during this time that some structures began to be noticed that showed the full force of a quake like this. In the country's southern Haiti province, which is a place known for its extensive olive groves, a huge crack formed through one farm, which was as wide as a football field and measured as deep as a 13-story building. Measuring 984 feet or 300 meters long, 165 feet or 50 meters wide, and 130 feet or 40 meters deep, it had split an olive grove into two and made it impossible to cross from one side to the other without traveling all the way around it. This was just one of the many huge cracks that covered the landscape in both countries, with satellite imagery showing how far they reached. This is actually quite unusual, because despite movies often sometimes showing huge fissures forming during an earthquake, they are in fact relatively rare. Sometimes though, when such huge amounts of energy are released, it's enough to tear the ground apart, with it taking centuries in some cases for the cracks to eventually fill in. Number 9. Real Foot Lake Real Foot Lake in the northwest corner of Tennessee is a surprisingly new body of water and didn't exist at all at the beginning of the 19th century. In 1811 and early 1812, however, a series of powerful earthquakes struck the New Madrid seismic zone and violently shook the region. 
This activity caused the land to sink, creating a huge natural depression, and it was this subsidence combined with the temporarily altered course of the Mississippi and local waterways that flooded into the depression that led to the formation of Realfoot Lake. Amazingly, this process took a period of just a few weeks, and the lake has been there ever since. Covering an area of about 15,000 acres, Realfoot Lake, known for its shallow waters with an average depth of 6 feet or 1.8 meters and a maximum depth of around 18 feet or just over 5.5 meters, the lake bed, which is filled with sediment from the Mississippi River, supports a unique ecosystem, allowing the development of dense cypress forests which have grown in and around the water. The creation of Realfoot Lake completely changed the local ecosystem, with it quickly becoming a habitat for a wide array of wildlife, particularly waterfowl and fish. Now it's an important area for bird watching, especially for observing migratory birds like ducks and the American bald eagle, and it's also a popular destination for fishing, known for its large stocks of crappie, bass, and catfish. Realfoot Lake has also had a profound impact on human communities, many of whom didn't understand the forces at work that created it in the first place. This led to stories of its formation making its way into the local folklore, and there are many who still regard it to be a deeply spiritual area. Number 8. The Northeast Croatian Sinkholes While several fault lines exist in the country, Croatia isn't a place that's typically associated with powerful earthquakes. But in 2021, strange cracks and holes started appearing in some regions that were linked back to activity taking place far beneath the surface. At the end of December in 2020, a 6.4 magnitude quake struck the region around the city of Petrinja, which itself was the strongest quake to have hit the country in more than 40 years. It's not unusual to hear about strange formations occurring at the same time as quakes happen, but something else happened this time, and it took months before things settled. Just a few days after the earthquake, some residents began reporting the appearance of huge holes on their land, some of which measured over 98 feet wide and 49 feet deep. A month later, at least 100 had formed and were still developing at seemingly random places, all within a small region around the quake's epicenter. Sinkholes do sometimes happen after a quake, but there's never been a case where so many have been found, and researchers were soon flying in and trying to explain why this was happening. With holes in backyards, next to the entrances of homes, and in some cases swallowing entire properties, it's now believed to have been the result of the unique geology in the area. Most of the ground rock is made up of limestone, which is susceptible to being eroded away by water. This process usually takes place over a long period of time, an occasional sinkhole would be expected, but the earthquake changed all of this. It created a network of fractures within the already fragile rock, and this allowed water to seep through like never before. It wore away at the rock and created cavities in just a matter of weeks, which then eventually caused the surface to collapse into them. Of course, knowing that this happens doesn't necessarily offer any way of predicting where it will occur or preventing it, but next time an earthquake hits the regions, part of the emergency response will be to carefully monitor the ground in the weeks afterwards to minimize the injuries and damage that are caused by sinkholes like these. Moving on to number 7, the Cascadia Subduction Zone. The Cascadia Subduction Zone is a huge and potentially problematic tectonic boundary that stretches along a 620-mile or 1,000-kilometer route off the west coast of North America. Running from northern Vancouver Island in Canada to northern California in the United States, along where the Juan de Fuca and Gorda plates are subducting beneath the North American plate, it first began to form many millions of years ago and continues to grow by around 1.5 inches or 4 centimeters a year. Known as a subduction zone, it's the type of fault line that elsewhere has been responsible for some of the most powerful earthquakes on record, and research has suggested that a new event along this one is long overdue. The most recent major earthquake in the Cascadia subduction zone occurred in January of 1700, and estimated to be between magnitude 8.7 and 9.2, caused a significant ground shaking and generated a massive tsunami that impacted not only the Pacific Northwest coast, but also reached as far as Japan. Even though it's been quiet ever since, the concern is that the zone has the potential to generate very large earthquakes with magnitude of up to 9 or higher, which would have devastating effects on the heavy populated and economically vital regions of British Columbia, Washington, Oregon, and Northern California. Such an event would likely produce strong ground shaking, landslides, and potentially a large tsunami, posing significant risks to everything in its path. 
All that can be done for now, though, is to monitor it and put in place effective disaster preparedness and mitigation strategies. It's hoped that by doing this, there will be enough warning of a major event, and that there will be at least some time to evacuate anyone that's in the danger zone. Number 6. The Weber Deep The Banda Sea, which is off the coast of Indonesia, offers up some of the greatest diving spots and island retreats in the world, but deep beneath the water's surface, there's a huge formation that's the biggest known exposed fault line in the world. Known as Weber Deep, it's one of the deepest oceanic trenches in the world, plunging to over 23,000 feet or 7,200 meters. But rather forming like most other trenches, this one is linked to tectonic activity in the region, where the Indo-Australian plate converges with the Eurasian plate. The Weber Deep is the result of subduction, a process where one of the Earth's tectonic plates slides beneath another. In this case, the Australian portion of the Indo-Australian plate is being subducted under the Eurasian plate. The immense pressure and movement of these plates have created a deep trench in the ocean floor, forming the Weber Deep. Other trenches, like the Mariana Trench, are formed at zones where oceanic plate is subducted under a continental plate. Here, however, there's an oceanic to oceanic plate convergence, which is a much rarer occurrence where two oceanic plates collide, meaning Weber Deep is extremely geologically active and is the epicenter of regular seismic events, including earthquakes, and also cause volcanic activity as the subducting plate melts and creates magma. As the focal point of potentially dangerous activity in the region, Weber Deep is constantly monitored and studied with the hope that researchers will not only be able to preempt events in that region, but learn more about tectonic movements in general and potentially improve predictive models to other fault lines around the world. Number 5. Lake Tanganyika Lake Tanganyika, which is on the border between Tanzania and the Democratic Republic of Congo, Burundi, and Zambia, is an enormous rift lake that was formed between 9 and 12 million years ago, and it's within the part of East Africa's complex tectonic structure called the Albertine Rift. It's a geological marvel. It's a testament to the raw power of the Earth, which formed approximately 9 to 12 million years ago during the formation of the East African Rift where the plates are pulling apart. The formation of Lake Tanganyika is directly linked to this rifting process where the Earth's crust stretches and thins, creating a series of faults and, as a result, a depression that eventually fills with water. This process is ongoing, and even today, the lake is slowly expanding as the tectonic plates continue to move apart. Currently at around 4,700 feet or 1,400 meters deep, with a maximum length of about 418 miles or about 673 kilometers, and a width of up to 45 miles or 72 kilometers, Lake Tanganyika holds the record of being the second deepest and longest freshwater lake in the world. The lake's depth is a direct result of this extensive rifting and thinning of the Earth's crust in the region. This geologic history has had a significant impact on the biodiversity of the region, with Lake Tanganyika being one of the richest freshwater ecosystems on Earth, and as many as 2,000 species are found within the waters, many of which are endemic. As well as its age, this is the result of unique environmental conditions within the lake, such as temperature stratification with warmer, oxygen-rich waters near the surface and cooler, oxygen-poor waters in the depths. This stratification affects the distribution of life in the lake, with different species adapted to different layers of the water column. Number 4. The Silfra Ravine The Silfra Ravine, which is in the Thinkfjord National Park in Iceland, is one of the best places in the world that you can go to see the process of continental plates pulling away from one another. Its formation is a direct consequence of the divergent tectonic activity at the boundary of the North American and Eurasian plates, and as these two massive plates slowly drift apart, they create fissures and ravines in the Earth's surface, with Silfra being one of the most prominent and beautiful examples. The formation of it began around 10,000 years ago at the end of the last ice age, and as climate warmed, the massive glaciers that covered Iceland began to melt. The enormous weight of the ice had been depressing the land, and as it lifted, fissures started to appear due to the tectonic plates moving apart. This rifting process is part of the larger Mid-Atlantic Ridge, which runs right through Iceland and the reason why the island is one of the most volcanically active locations on Earth. Silfra's formation is still ongoing, with tectonic plates moving at an average rate of about three quarters of an inch, or about two centimeters a year. This movement continually redefines the ravine structure, gradually widening and deepening it. The water within Silfra comes from nearby glaciers, primarily the Langjokers Glacier, which is about 31 miles or 50 kilometers to the north, with the meltwater from the glacier traveling through a network of underground porous lava rock tubes, a journey that can take anywhere from 30 to 100 years. 
This natural filtration process purifies the water, making it some of the clearest and cleanest water on the planet. What is pretty unique about sulfur, though, is the visibility of the process itself. Visitors can actually dive or snorkel between the continents, floating above the continental divide, as it were, witnessing the walls of the ravine that mark the edges of the tectonic plates. The clarity of the water here, which can offer perfect visibility, makes it a one-of-a-kind location for divers to observe geological processes in real time. Number 3. The Atacama Trench The Atacama Trench, which is also known as the Peru-Chile Trench, is a vast oceanic trench in the eastern Pacific Ocean, extending along the western coast of South America. It is one of the most significant geological features in the region, and it's one of the deepest and longest of its type that's ever been discovered. It's been formed over millions of years by the subduction process because of the convergence of the Nazca tectonic plate and the South American plate. The Nazca plate, an oceanic plate, is gradually moving eastwards towards the continent of South America, and due to the higher density of the oceanic plate in comparison to the continental plate, the Nazca plate is forced beneath the South American plate, leading to its subduction into the Earth. As the Nazca plate descends, it forms a deep and narrow depression in the ocean floor, which is the Atacama. A trench. This trench reaches depths of over 26,200 feet, or over 8,000 meters, making it one of the deepest points in the eastern Pacific. The subduction process not only creates the trench, but also generates significant activity in the area, including the uplift of the Andes mountain range, which is one of the most visible surface-level features formed by the interaction of these plates. The trench is a highly active geological region, so it's an important site to study to further understand plate tectonics, subduction, and the Earth's crust. The intense pressure and heat conditions in the trench have led to various phenomena, including the formation of metamorphic rocks and the generation of volcanic activity along the Andean volcanic belt. Furthermore, the trench plays a crucial role in the region's biodiversity and environmental systems. Those nutrient-rich waters resulting from the upwelling caused by the subduction process support a diverse ecosystem. This includes a variety of fish, crustaceans, and other marine organisms, which in turn support local fisheries and the wider ecological balance along the coastline. It's not easy to conduct research here, though, because the extreme conditions and depths of the Atacama pose a number of significant challenges. However, advances in deep-sea technology, such as remotely operated vehicles and sophisticated sonar mapping, have opened new avenues for investigation in recent years, and seemingly, every research mission comes back with huge amounts of new information to study. Number 2. The Great Rift Valley, East Africa for the relatively short time, in geological terms, that humans have been on the planet, the continents haven't changed all that much. They are, though, constantly moving, and within hundreds of thousands of years, things will look very different. There probably isn't a place where this is as true as in eastern Africa, where the Great Rift Valley is slowly tearing the continent apart and will one day become an entirely new ocean. Stretching over 3,700 miles or over 6,000 kilometers from the Red Sea down through Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, and reaching as far as Mozambique, it is formed along the boundary of divergence of the African Plate and the Somali Plate, which is a process that began in the Miocene epoch around 25 million years ago. As the two plates pull apart, the crust thins and stretches, creating a series of faults and fractures, and this activity has led to the formation of linear valleys and depressions, which develop steep escarpments and flat valley floors, which are seen across the Great Rift Valley system. It's so extreme there that there are now towering mountains and deep lakes, with the most famous formations being Mount Kilimanjaro, Mount Kenya, and the Virunga Mountains, all of which owe their existence to the volcanic activity associated with the rifting process. As recently as 2018, several earthquakes were triggered in the region, and residents in Kenya began to notice huge cracks that had formed. Rather than being an opening through the crust, these are believed to have been caused by material that fell into deep cavities because of the earthquakes. But because they've happened along the fault line, they are, in effect, beginning to mark the boundary of where the tectonic plates will eventually split. It'll still be millions of years before the sides have completely separated and an ocean begins to form between them, but it's fascinating seeing the start of such an impactful geological process. The valley is already home to a series of deep lakes that have formed like this due to the sinking of the rift floor, such as Victoria, Malawi, Turkana, and many others. These, of course, support the large ecosystem here, but in this place in particular, it could well be responsible for human evolution, too. 
the Rift Valley has yielded some of the most significant archaeological discoveries, including fossils of early human ancestors, showing that early humans used to rely on the fresh water in the lakes and the species that thrived in the region. And without this, we may not have survived long enough to become what we are today. Number 1. Carrizo Plain, San Andreas Fault, California the Carrizo Plain, located in central California, is located along one of the most famous and most studied tectonic structures in the world, the San Andreas Fault. And here, you can see exactly why there's such concern and conversation surrounding the potential for a major event to take place along this fault line and the severity of things if it does happen. The San Andreas Fault itself is a continental transform fault that extends roughly 750 miles or 1,200 kilometers through California. It forms the tectonic boundary between the Pacific Plate and the North American Plate, and the Carrizo Plain lies along this fault line, making it a great place for observing the effects of plate tectonics. The fault is a right lateral strike slip fault, meaning the plates move horizontally past one another. This movement is not smooth and continuous, but happens in sudden shifts during earthquakes, which can be of varying magnitudes. The interaction of these plates has played a crucial role in shaping the geology and topography of the Carrizo Plain. Across this region, you'll see various features that are indicative of tectonic events, most notably the linear scar of the San Andreas Fault, which can be seen on the surface as a distinct feature cutting across the landscape. This area also has features like offset streams and sag ponds, which are small bodies of water formed in depressions along the fault line and have been formed by the movement of the Earth's crust along the fault. Furthermore, the plain has a variety of unique landforms such as pressure ridges and fault gorges, which are formed due to the intense pressure and grinding at the fault lines. Another site of interest is Wallace Creek, which was carved into the landscape tens of thousands of years ago by a small stream that leads into Soda Lake. By pure chance, it runs perpendicular to the San Andreas Fault, and this has given geologists a fascinating glimpse into how earthquakes change the landscape, and has given them a way to uncover the historical tectonic activity in the region. And that's because the creek is actually offset by about 425 feet or 130 meters as a result of activity along the fault, 23 feet or 7 meters of which was caused solely by Fort Tejon earthquake in 1857. It's by looking at this that researchers suspect a frighteningly powerful earthquake took place between 1540 and 1630. It's not just the San Andreas Fault that can be seen there either, as the plain also sits above the much smaller Big Spring Fault, the San Juan Fault, the Morales Fault, and the White Rock Fault, all of which run parallel to the San Andreas Fault and have led to the formation of the Caliente Mountain Range. The Carrizo Plain is, therefore, one of the most important areas for earthquake monitoring and research in the world. The San Andreas Fault is notorious for producing significant earthquakes, as it accumulates stress over time that is eventually released suddenly. Historically, the region has witnessed many violent events, including the powerful Fort Tejon earthquake in 1857. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you to our channel members.